Hello, I'm Pastor Marilyn from Forsyth Presbyterian Church and Newkirk Campus Ministry at Mercer University. And I'm Pastor Joseph from Culpeper Presbyterian Church. Welcome to our Lenten Sermon and Discussion Series, From the Cup to the Cross. This series will be focusing on Matthew's account of the lead up to Jesus' crucifixion, which can be found in chapters 26 and 27 of Matthew's Gospel. Essentially, we're going to be spending all of Lent on what's called the Triduum, which means three days, and refers in this case to the three days of Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday will always be in our minds as we preach and teach our way through the events of these two densely packed chapters. But we're going to leave that day itself for the Easter season. I know that in my context, although we read the story of the Last Supper and Crucifixion at our Prophecy and Fulfillment Service on Good Friday each year, I rarely, if ever, get the opportunity to preach on these passages. They stay in their own time, but I want to wrestle with them with my community just as I do the other parts of Scripture. Both Forsyth Prez and New Kirk usually hears these texts in our annual Tenebrae service, where we hear the story of Christ's passion according to one of the four Gospels. In the Tenebrae service, we listen to Scripture unfold the story in its own way, pausing between sections for song, but not for exposition. In Holy Week, I want the Scripture to speak for itself, so I rarely feel I have anything to add. But these texts are rich in layers, meanings, and messages, and it is the call of our communities to proclaim the gospel. So we're going to stretch these stories out this year over the entire season of Lent and explore them together. Making our way from table to tomb over the course of 40 days, we'll be concentrating on the communities accompanying Christ to the cross. And we'll be listening for God's word in scripture, sermons, video lessons, and in the discussions we have within our own communities. While we will be using the New Revised Standard Version for this series, you can use any translation you like. Comparing different translations of scripture is a great way to gain greater insight into the text. Pastor, Pastor Joseph and I will start the discussion. And then y'all will take over in your small groups and in the comments section of these videos below. This week we're focusing on preparation. Before the Last Supper can happen, several events of preparation take place. This chapter opens with Jesus, once again telling his disciples that he is on the path to crucifixion. But this time he reveals the timeline. After two days and during Passover. Next, we meet the chief priests and elders of the people. That's a phrase used repeatedly throughout the Tridium narrative in Matthew to refer to the earthly powers from Jesus' own people who oppose him. These men plot to kill Jesus, but Matthew specifically tells us they do not want to do so during the festival of Passover. They fear the crowds and Jesus' popularity with them. Next, we see a woman disciple anoint Jesus' head with costly perfume, valued at about a year's wages. She does not speak. She performs a powerful, potent, pungent sign act. Jesus interprets her performance not in the messianic tradition or of, of anointing a new king or savior for, of the people, but as an act of preparation for burial. Again, he declares the lonesome value he intends to walk in the hearing of all his disciples, including Judas. And Judas makes his own plans. He approaches the chief priests and asks, what will you give me to betray him to you? The sum upon which they agree, that famous 30 pieces of silver, is absolutely paltry in comparison with the price of the perfume poured out on Jesus, which Judas just witnessed. If Judas was motivated by avarice, he got enough to buy a junkyard or groceries for a family for a week in exchange for the life of the world and the bread of life. Finally, the disciples prepare to observe the Passover Seder meal. Jesus has already made arrangements and the disciples follow his directions to have this sacred meal within the walls of Jerusalem. As we look together at Matthew's account of the Triduum, one of the motifs that spoke to us is that of community. 
As leaders of faith communities, our eyes are always on the ways that the biblical narrative and community are woven together. We see two distinct communities that are distinct but overlapping in these verses. The first is that of the chief priests and the elders of the people, who in verse 3 gather in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. He is dangerous. The second community is that of Jesus' disciples, which includes the twelve, but also includes the woman who pours the ointment on Jesus' head in the house of Simon the leper. These two communities are separated in their location, one at the palace, the other at the home of an outcast, and in their preferred timeline. The first community is, to preparing, to, is preparing to arrest Jesus by stealth after the festival comes to a close. And the second hears very clearly Jesus announced that the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified in two days during the festival of Passover. These two communities overlap in the person of Judas Iscariot, who goes to the chief priests and offers to betray Jesus to them. Both communities are also preparing for Passover as part of a larger cultural movement. And both communities are preparing for the death of Jesus of Nazareth, albeit in very different ways. By the end of our reading, the preparations have been made. The chief priests and the elders are prepared to arrest and kill Jesus though their timeline now aligns with Jesus' prediction. The woman has prepared Jesus for his burial. Judas is prepared to betray his teacher, and the disciples have prepared the Passover meal. We've reached the first day of the Unleavened Bread Festival, Passover, when God's people celebrate their liberation from bondage has come, and the lamb is prepared for slaughter. As Christians, we know another lamb is prepared for another liberation. But the people living the story have yet to see what is coming in the passages we will study together over the coming weeks. We're going to pass things off to y'all's discussion groups or to your individual reflection so that this conversation can continue. We study scripture together so that we can get a fuller picture of what God is doing in the text and what God is doing in the world around us. We're entering this story together to grow as disciples, so we encourage you not to think of this source as a set of definitive answers, but as a starting point for your own exploration. We encourage you to share your questions and your insights, both with us and with one another. <laughs>